The September 11 attacks on US soil and the October 12, 2002 bombing in Bali were acts of terrorism causing the deliberate killings of innocent civilians. Al-Qaeda-linked groups were blamed. The world, particularly the Western world, was taken by shock. It was unbelievable that religious fundamentalism of this kind could exist in the world. Such acts of terrorism were never before witnessed by the democratic, freedom-loving countries such as the US and Australia. These acts are considered as a threat to world peace and human tranquility. But one nation that is more familiar with such terrorism and has suffered for centuries from continuous acts of such barbarism in the Middle East is the Assyrian nation. Whilst this has been prominent under the Saddam regime, it is not limited to only that dark era. Consequently for the Assyrians, the military success of ridding Iraq of Saddam Hussein did not bring an end to the danger of extinction and ongoing suffering. The Assyrians have throughout the last century pleaded and struggled for a democratic state. Only then will the Assyrians be able to assert their national, cultural, linguistic and religious rights. Only then will they be able to live in a new Iraq polity that will relieve them of the fear of continuous persecution of Assyrians. The future of Assyrians now hangs in the balance. For the first time since the establishment of the Iraqi state, Assyrians have the opportunity to contribute towards a politically reshaped Iraqi government and establish their own reshaped political destiny as the indigenous, both ethnically and linguistically, people of Iraq. Any such state must recognise the Assyrian identity as the indigenous people of the land. With this message, the Assyrian Universal Alliance started a political campaign in 2003 and met on different occasions with the former Australian Foreign Minister, the Honourable Alexander Downer MP and the Honourable Stephen Smith MP. They've also met with the Honourable John Howard MP, the former Prime Minister of Australia and many other Senators and Members of Parliament. The message was loud and clear. Iraqi Christians are greatly concerned that Iraq's Muslim majority might establish rule based on religious intolerance, especially after the rise of Islamist groups and Kurdish influence, the inclusion of Islam as the official religion of Iraq and making of Sharia law, a source of legislation that has been instituted in the new Iraqi constitution that states, Islam is the official religion of the state and is to be considered a source of legislation. No law may be enacted that contradicts the established provisions of Islam. The indigenous Assyrians and other Christian minorities have no chance to survive in Iraq under a constitution that declares Islam as the official religion of the state and the Sharia as a source of its laws. They have no chance to survive in a country ruled by Islamists, Pan-Arabs and Kurdish separatist dreams. Christians have received a number of warnings of dire consequences if they should disobey Islamic laws. Assyrian men were told to begin keeping beards. Assyrian girls have been kidnapped and even raped on the way to church. The number of attacks against Christians is increasing. Not even our Assyrian towns and villages are secured anymore after multiple execution-style attacks against our men and women in the few villages in the province of Ninwe. The Kurds have been calling for a federation that would include the over 6,000 years old Assyrian cities such as Dohuk, Arbil, the oil-rich city of Kirkuk and other parts of Assyrian homeland. Assyrians find themselves compelled to counter their demands because as the indigenous people they are more entitled to the territories than those who came to Assyria as invaders. In the meantime, historical facts reveal that the Kurds have participated in the repeated massacre of Assyrians. The Assyrian Universal Alliance appeals to the Australian government to help their suffering nation at this critical time in aiding the resettlement projects and the rebuilding of their destroyed villages and to support the Assyrian demands for autonomy in their homeland. The indigenous Assyrians must be granted safe haven within a federal Iraqi state in which they can administer their culture and ethnicity and live in peace as proud Iraqi citizens in the land of their forefathers. If this ancient indigenous people of Iraq is decimated, then all other remaining Christians in Iraq will immediately become vulnerable. The only member of parliament that stood for the Assyrian Universal Alliance plea and helped us to present our case to the Australian Federal Parliament was the Honourable Chris Bowen MP. 
Mr. Bowen initiated the idea of establishing the Assyria Parliamentary Friendship Group in the Federal Parliament and was chairman of this group, who conducted many meetings and conferences in Canberra with members of Parliament and the Human Rights Commission of Foreign Affairs. In early 2004, the Assyrian Universal Alliance asked Mr. Bowen to support the Assyrian petition drawn to the attention of the House stating the need to develop an Australian foreign policy that calls on the Iraqi government to designate a geographic protected administrative area for the Christian Assyrians, also known as Chaldeans, Syriacs in Iraq. The indigenous Assyrian Christians must be granted safe haven within a federal Iraqi state in which they can administer themselves and live in peace as proud Iraqi citizens in the land of their forefathers. On 31st of January 2004, Mr Bowen issued a media alert calling on the Australian government to urge the Iraqi government to create a protected administrative area for persecuted minorities. On Monday 23rd of May 2005, Mr Chris Bowen moved the AUA motion before question time in the Federal Parliament's House of Representatives. The AUA managed to collect over 3,500 signatures supporting this petition from the local community. The motion was successfully seconded and endorsed by the six speakers of the House. The whole debate lasted about 30 minutes. Notice number three, Iraqi ethnic groups. I call the Honourable Member for Prospect. Mr Deputy Speaker, I move that this House calls on the Australian Government to make representations to the newly elected transitional government of Iraq to ensure that the Assyrian, Chaldean, Syriac and Mandaean peoples of Iraq one, will be constitutionally guaranteed the right to freely exercise their customs, religion, language and traditions, two, are given the same protection by law enforcement and international security forces as other ethnic groups, three, will be entitled to proper representation and participation in all levels of government. Mr Deputy Speaker, this important motion deals with the human rights of a very significant number of people in Iraq. There has been much said and written in recent months about the differing religious and ethnic groups in Iraq. The interaction between Shiites, Sunnis and Kurds is something anyone with an interest in Iraq could now speak of relatively confidently just by reading any one of Australia's newspapers. However, there is another dimension to the unfolding Iraqi story which has received little attention. It is a story which has the potential to erupt into renewed violence and to develop into a humanitarian crisis of the first order. It's the story of Iraq's other minorities, the Assyrians, Chaldeans, Mandaeans and Syriacs. It's, hardly, it's, it's hard to exactly say how many people belong to these ethnic groups because Saddam Hussein prohibited people identifying themselves as belonging to one of these groups in his government census. However, estimates place the combined Iraqi population of these groups at about one million people, a substantial figure. Why do these groups need more examination than they have been receiving and more examination uh, in the situation of post-Hussein Iraq? It's for the same reason, Mr Deputy Speaker, that they are gaining unwanted attention from fundamentalist groups in Iraq. They are Iraq's Christian minority. The Assyrians are an ancient race which once laid claim to one of the world's great empires. Its capital, Nineveh, is now known as Mosul. Their other claim to fame is to be one of the world's first Christian civilizations. Many of their close cousins, the Mandaeans, practice a unique religion which follows the teachings of John the Baptist. Anyone who believes, Mr Deputy Speaker, that people should be able to follow the religion of their choice without fear of persecution has every reason to fear recent developments in Iraq. There are widespread reports of voting fraud, meaning that minority voters were disenfranchised in recent elections. In predominantly Assyrian towns in the north, for example, ballot boxes simply did not arrive and votes could not be lodged. The absence of international observers makes it impossible to know exactly how big this problem was, but anecdotal evidence suggests that it was widespread. Also of concern is the recent spate of church bombings throughout Iraq, a development which has seen former Archbishop of Canterbury, Lord Carey, join in a campaign to heighten awareness of this issue. Credible dossiers of suspected state-condoned murders and disappearances of members of minority groups have been prepared by various human rights groups. Most concerning, Mr Deputy Speaker, is that these murders have not stopped with the fall of Hussein. Indeed, many Assyrians fear that they have become more frequent. One theory, which seems to have at least some credibility, is that Iraqi Christians are being blamed by militants for the Western invasion and are proving easy targets for dissident militias. The situation in the northern provinces of Iraq can best be described at the moment as a tinderbox. 
An estimated 40,000 Syrians and others have fled Iraq for neighbouring countries in recent months to escape persecution and fearful that violence will break out into full fully fledged oppression and that, that these groups have been used to for centuries. It remains to be seen whether the optimism that accompanied the fall of Hussein will be realised. There are some positive signs, and a Syrian, for an example, has been appointed to the Iraqi cabinet. But Iraq will not be truly a democracy until the rights of Assyrians, Chaldeans, Mandaeans and Syriacs are protected. We have heard much about the success of the recent Iraqi elections, but frankly I don't regard them as a success when you consider the hardship, oppression and fear being experienced by these minority groups and the indigenous people of Iraq, and I don't see how anyone could. Ineluctably, the signs are foreboding. If the worst happens and widespread violence breaks out, the West will need to be ready, whether negotiating for an autonomous administrative area or, as a last resort, providing refugee arrangements for minorities fleeing oppression the UN and coalition nations will need to be ready for humanitarian crisis of the first order. Recent experiences with such crises suggest the world won't be ready. It's incumbent on all of us, government and opposition members alike, to do whatever we can to ensure that the rights of this one million people are protected. I commend the motion to the House. Is the motion seconded? Second the motion and reserve my right to speak. The, hon the honourable member for Cornwall seconds the motion and reserves her right to speak. On 5th of June 2009, the 26th World Congress of the Yasirian Universal Alliance that convened in Sydney selected the Honourable Chris Bowen MP, former Assistant Treasurer, Minister for Competition Policy and Consumer Affairs as the non assyrian Man of the Year for his substantial contribution and support of the Yasirian Universal Alliance and for his extensive efforts in conveying the needs of the Assyrians to the Federal Government and for his outstanding efforts in the success of the AUA 26th World Congress. Since then, Mr Bowen continued to support the plight of Assyrians in Iraq by meeting with the representatives of the Assyrian organisations, including the AUA and organising meetings with AUA representatives to meet with the Australian officials. This included meeting with Ministers for Foreign Affairs, the Honourable Stephen Smith MP in 2008, and Senator, the Honourable Bob Carr in November 2012. Mr Bowen made many representations on behalf of the Assyrians, attending Assyrian functions including the unveiling of the Assyrian Genocide Monument at Bonnerig Park, the Assyrian New Year Festival at Fairfield Showground, and showing much concern about Iraqi Assyrian refugees in and around Iraq. Since the violence has erupted in Syria, our Iraq refugees have been caught in the middle of the crossfire. Mr Bowen, being the Minister for Immigration and Citizenship, announced on the 13th of September 2012 that he will increase Australia's refugee and humanitarian program to 20,000, as well as provide special assistance to our refugees stranded in Syria and Lebanon by accepting an extra 1,000 refugees from the war-torn area. The Assyrians in Australia and abroad appreciate the continued support and sincerity of the Honourable Chris Bowen MP, Minister for Immigration and Citizenship, over the years in raising the Assyrian issue with the Australian government and wish him success in his future endeavours.